My name is Shane Moss. I have three different hats that I wear outside of this top hat. Um, I am a stand-up comedian from America. That's the majority of how I make my living. And another big part of what I do is I'm a science communicator. I have a science podcast called Here We Are, where I interview uh, different life scientists, usually about how the brain works um, each week, why we behave the way we do, that sort of thing. And then uh, the reason why I'm here is because my, my third hat is I'm a psychedelic, I'm a psychonaut, a psychedelic communicator, and a um, psychedelic advocate, I, I guess. So I basically put together a comedy, science, psychedelic show that kind of became popular, and then I did a big 111 city tour in the U.S., and that led to a documentary, and I find myself doing events like Breaking Convention now. Yeah. I was, I had this big 111 city tour and it was getting some press and I was getting on podcasts and the producer of the documentary, he, he was producing a lot of comedy stuff at the time and thought that it would be, uh, wanted to do something else, got a hold of me, liked my story, heard me on podcasts and we chit chatted about things. It was right around the time that I was about to go to the Psychedelic Science Conference in 2016. So we went there and filmed, it was, it's the biggest conference in the world, it's every four years. It was the who's who of psychedelic research and so we filmed all, all the top people and had all this footage and then we are like, alright, I guess we just follow me around while I do some psychedelics and see where it goes, not knowing that I was eventually going to lose my mind and it's going to kind of change the course of the documentary a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the short story is that I was doing um, a lot of psychedelics during the filming of the documentary to kind of stay in that space. And so I was tripping way more than I normally would have. I was, I was tripping about three times a week. and. I was starting to get a little manic and then I had an ayahuasca experience that kind of launched me into mania. I got like messages and everything that were very important that I, you know, people needed to hear and, and um, you know it seemed like there was a lot of confirmation and evidence for them, probably just a lot of confirmation bias and that made me, re it, it was really exciting. I was trying to figure out how all of these like synchronicities were happening and it led me to think that maybe I had figured out time travel and <laughs> stayed up uh, night and day sorting out how time travel works. And about a week later, still manic, and not having slept, I, I did uh, Mushrooms at a Roger Waters concert of Pink Floyd. And that really launched me into an exceptionally manic state. And, I, and then I really, really didn't sleep. I was sleeping a little bit, but then I didn't sleep for another like couple weeks. Led to psychosis and a lot of paranoia. And I ended up in a, a mental institution um, for a week or so. And, and uh, had, had to be medicated and that sort of thing, and, which had never happened to me. In 20 plus years of nothing but really positive psychedelic experiences, um, you know, nothing even approaching that had ever happened to me before. And, uh, you know, I got a little cocky and pushed it a little too far, I guess. Yeah. You know, going crazy was like one of the more interesting experiences of my life. I don't, I don't regret what I went through. What I went through, I the whole time I was like, I kind of know what's happening right now. I'm manic and I'm experiencing some psychosis and my thoughts are disorganized and this is something like this will, this will wear off. I'm getting my mind back. I could feel I was getting my mind back. And it wasn't happening fast enough for some of the people around me. 
and it was like, you know, making people nervous. And so, especially like a bunch of uh, my fa like conservative family that don't understand these worlds. And, and uh, that's kind of what happened and exasperated me being put in against my will into an into a institution. So. Um, well, it wasn't that hard for me to be vulnerable in the documentary. It was, it was, it was a little hard, but I have, I'm a comedian and much of our life is just making ourselves vulnerable. That's like what we do for a living as an exercise for fun. That's just like what our lives are about. So, you know, if you're going to lose your mind on psychedelics, to do it when you're making a documentary is like, oh, it makes the documentary more interesting than it would have otherwise been. Like, we didn't really know what the direction of the documentary was going to be. We didn't know how, I mean, my, my director was pretty relieved that I got, that, <laughs> that, I, that I had a, that I had a break. So, um, you know, for, for me, that, that stuff isn't that hard. It's hard, it's hard to think about my family um, seeing it. That's just never going to see it through an accepting set of eyes. But it's not a big deal. When you hear people talk about the benefits of psychedelics, you'll hear like, Neuroplasticity. Look at the, look at all these new connections in the mind, and and wow, this new re, uh, regeneration, and and these creative insights and this openness that people are experiencing. And there's obviously limits on everything, and there's too much of a good thing, and sometimes. The reason why your brain has built patterns that it's built is because those patterns are exceptionally useful. And, and they really make life a lot easier to navigate when you don't say, need to think about every step in life. Or, uh, and you can like go on autopilot. Much of our lives were on autopilot, that might seem bad, but that's for the best. You don't want to be consciously aware of all of the blood flowing through your brain and, or, and, and your veins and, and be involved in controlling that activity and like be responsible for that, you know? You, you want that delegated to the, systems, uh, to, the, to the systems that specialize in that. And um, so, I think that you can tap into parts of the mind where your involvement, your conscious involvement in it is not helpful. <laughs> you know? If you could tap into your mind and your heart pumping, uh, well, well, your heart might not want you tinkering around with what it's doing. It has a job to do doesn't want some newbie on drugs, <laughs> you know, pulling all the levers and pushing buttons because this is a fun experience for them. So, you know, uh, there, there's, there's um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons there's, uh, to everything. There's extremes with every situation, yin and the yang, the whole thing. So, too much of a good thing. I guess what I'd like the general public to know about psychedelics, and part of what I seeked out to do in my documentary is that I wanted to find where the edge was, and I wanted to see like what is too much, how many psychedelics can you do before it, I thought I was going to do so many, and I was still going to do it in a safe way, but I found the edge where it was no longer safe for me. But to do that, I forced myself to have far more psychedelic experiences than most any reasonable human being would ever even consider doing. And, and um, so, you know, to find, to find those edges. And, and I was stopped short, I'm sure, long before 
things would have been like a real long-term devastating problem or, or leading to some long-term cognitive impairment. I mean, I, I find I learned a lot of lessons from it and I'm, I'm a better person for it. And that's, that's what I'd like people to know is, is all these horror stories that you hear. I've had a horror story on psychedelics. You can come back from that being the best version of yourself that there's ever been. Yeah, so if people are already into psychedelics, beware of thinking that you are, you, you know, psychedelics amplify everything, including every cognitive bias that we have evolved in our brains. And we have cognitive biases like egocentrism, which is like, there's only so much information that I have access to, so I'm working within that environment that I have access to, so I am, by that necessity, the center of my own universe of perception all of the time. And that thing, like say, egocentrism, can be emboldened and heightened just like sadness or happiness and any other experience. And uh, it can be um, uh, enhanced by, by psychedelics. And you're in your search for truth and meaning and ego disillusion or whatever, we don't even know what an ego is or what we're even talking about here you can end up with a very big head about that. And you have all sorts of people in the psychedelic community bragging about their ego deaths. Well, if you had an ego death, why are you bragging about it? Like, I think your ego is alive and well if you're bragging about your ego death, <laughs> you know? Like, if you gotta stop the conversation to be like, no, 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 you gotta hear about my ego death. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think it died. <laughs> so, um, you know, be aware that these are temporary experiences and part of the reason why they seem so true and important and interesting is because they are so short and different and intense and the brain loves latching on to, it's just Novelty is a very salient thing, and the brain loves obsessing over these new perceptions and new problems, new issues that, that come up. And, and just like when you read a new book, and you're like, everyone needs to read this book. Psychedelics can be very much the same. And so what you definitely don't want to do is abandon a lifetime of other experiences and perception. It's good to have a new point of view, but you don't need to scrap everything because you had like one five minute DMT trip where you thought you got this very clear message because those trips and those perceptions are often just as fickle as, or more so than our everyday perceptions. I mean, I think psychedelic research is important because I have a science podcast where we very, very rarely talk about psychedelics. We talk about the brain, we talk about neuroscience, psychology, evolutionary biology, things like that. And I had, uh, you know, I've been doing this for five years and I've had 250 some episodes. And, you know, I have people like that are doing great work with curing AIDS and, and blindness and childhood trauma. I've had a, a million different people, uh, 250, <laughs> way less than a million. I've had so many different people, uh, and, and not to mention read so many books, taken so many classes outside of that. And even though psychedelics is actually like a pretty small amount of my scientific interest, I think it shows the most potential out of anything out there. And I think mostly that's just because it's so underrepresented because of so many of the legal constraints and, and regulations. 
And, and I think just the morality of, to take psychedelics out of this, like, if you're determining why a scientist shouldn't be allowed to study something, you better have a very good reason for that. Like, are you putting like a human or an animal or something like that in danger or torturing something or something like that? Like, those are, those are reasons to, to have, to involve ethics. But the, the current structure of just like, we don't test these things because they're potentially dangerous or something like that, that's, that's not a reason to not test something. And science is, it, it wouldn't surprise me, I don't know, um, that how much of an influence psychedelics had on our evolutionary past. I wouldn't be surprised if it had a large impact, but I know that the scientific revolution and kind of the scientific method is, or whatever, uh, as it was developed like a few hundred years ago, has been one of the most profound changes in all of humanity. And they were, they are both two great methods of inquiry. They are both two great methods of being like, hey, I don't know how this thing works, but rather than dismissing it or saying like, oh, it must just be God or, or it's just not knowable, going, this seems worth knowing and a tool to investigate and to explore our curiosities more. And yeah, so I think that's, that's part of the importance. The psychedelic culture is something that's like very fringe seeming, and it is, and it's like very, it's not normative. And you look at the social norms in your environment, and people are in your local sports team and have these like, everyone seems to have these same like political views and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people out there are actually pretty confused by a lot of the social norms that are out there and probably feel really alienated and probably feel like there's not people that are feeling the same way that they do that are interested in say psychedelics or um, other forms of divergent thinking and behavior and activities. And I think if you put yourself out there and look a little harder, you would find that there are far more people into that kind of stuff than you would ever realize. Um, I hope everyone checks out my science podcast. Here we are. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>